Hello everyone, it's Yuri Kuzemko here and today I'm going to be doing kind of like an offline stream of uh, one thing I'm trying to do uh, which is related to software engineering and as you probably see on the screen uh, we have some kind of an issue which we're going to be solving today. Uh, first of all, before we move forward, I just wanted to make a quick intro about my activity here. So right now I'm uh, I'm doing a lot of software engineering and um, I'm doing a lot of interesting things that happen um, during my work. Um, like I call it kind of like scientific experiments, right? Because I uh, experimenting a lot with different software systems, products, doing experiments fixing issues and they're really interesting so I decided to record this video and show you one of them uh, so maybe you find some value on it or bring some value to it it depends right uh, okay so moving forward today uh, we're gonna be doing something for the NNN platform and NNN platform it's a great automation tool I love this platform uh, because you can quickly uh, set up your own integrations, optimizations, almost without coding, but if you want you still can to add some coding really easy um, to them and yeah you can stop pretty much any kind of integration in the world with that platform. Uh, so if you if you don't know about the platform you can go to the nan.io and here's an example how you can build, build visual workflows uh, yeah and then um, set up different optimizations. Uh, for you uh, the other thing about this platform is, if you know the Zapier, uh, this is very popular industry in this industry platform for the automations. But for me, the Zapier is is pretty limited, uh, as it doesn't offer you as flexible features like you can do here in NNN. And the benefit of NNN is because this is the health, open source and self-hosted platform, so you can contribute to it, change it, modify under your needs, and have it pretty much limitless. And as today, Kurt, uh, I was I was hosting the NNN platform for myself a lot, um, for my automations, and I'm making some modifications to it, and I'm I'm building the docker images myself. Um, so why I'm mentioning docker images here because. Uh, um, I'm I'm kind of like deploying it as a Docker image, and uh, to I want to customize it. Like I want to add some new libraries, some new uh, functionality, right? Uh, so I'm writing a bit of a code, and I want to build my own version of NAN modified, maybe to contribute to open source. But the problem is that uh, NAN provided the the way to build the Docker image by default by running these commands. If you're familiar with with NAN a bit, and the problem is that the output image is really this issue describes more than one gig, but for me it's almost two gigs, and that's really a lot. If you're running somewhere in Kubernetes, you'll get timeout because pulling the two gigabyte image to start your service it's a lot. But if you uh, pull the image from the Docker Hub, you will see that it's about l lower than 300 megabytes. So, and um, yeah, some some person opened an issue about it, and he described the issue uh, about, about this um, stuff. So basically, the issue is that um, the NAN, if you go to the NAN GitHub, you can find that it uses Lerna, Lerna, right? And Lerna is a, a kind of like package, the tool for managing multiple different dependency um, levels in the same project. So, to, to better understand, so we have the package JSON here, so we can install node modules in the root, but we also have uh, another packages here that are nested and have own package JSONs. And it means that let's in the without Laren we should go to every of this directory and then make npm install npm build whatever. So it's it's a bit excruciating because we have a whole bunch of, of packages there. And Laren will really help us to do it all in one command. Uh, and it, we can just go ahead to the doc image and see how the um, Platform is building. So here we have NNN custom. Uh, we have the Docker file. Uh, in, it just in installs Lerna. 
and learn a bootstrap host production it, it initializes all the dependencies uh, for all packages and then we're running npm run build that builds those dependencies so we can so we can use them as our NAM custom build but what is the problem why the why the um, the image that you're building yourself is huge like almost two gigs and the image they have on docker hub is tiny about 300 megabytes we can take a look on this docker file because it actually describes um, why it's happened so here what they're doing they basically um, making the install of the NAN from the npm registry right um, let me find npm install global NAN you can see right and um, it means like they're not building NAM here so they built NAN somewhere locally they, they publish it to the registry and then the, this doc image is just pulls it from registry and creates doc entry point and it pulls the only production artifacts which are about 300 megabytes that's why this image is pretty much 300 megabytes it's not huge right it, it's it's okay uh, the problem with uh, custom image is that we're doing the build ourselves and this build includes not just the production ready um, artifacts dependencies it includes all the development dependencies that making this overhead of having this image two gigabytes uh, on the first glance we might think okay why is that happening so why we can just eliminate the development dependency during our production build and um, the problem is with learner so this as thing uh, makes some investigation here um, so he he just uh, find the, the the issue opened in um, learner that 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 describe this uh, that describes this uh, problem. Um, so uh, the problem is that uh, you can specify the production flag to the um, learner bootstrap command, but this production flag will only uh, will only populate on the root directory dependencies, right? So this is kind of like, I think it's a bug and this is not understandable for me, but the contributors of the learner, um, yeah, I saw there were an issue where they were talking about some contributor thought this is not a bug, this is kind of like, it should work, but I disagree, I completely disagree here. Um, so, only in the root package you saw all the dev dependencies you have here, which are few of them, right, will be omitted. But if you go down inside the packages, if you, you, you have the core, right, you have the package JSON, and this package JSON have a whole bunch of dev dependencies, so they are all included to this build. And this is what makes this build overhead because Learner works that way. And this guy here suggested to work around for it, so he suggested. In order to omit it, we should do it the way they are doing it for the real image. So, but they are, they are publishing to the npm registry, and then pulling from npm registry. Right? We can't do it that way because we can access to the any npm registry. Right? Right? But what we can do, we can launch our local registry and push to that registry, and then pull from that registry in the multi-stage Docker build and thus um, avoids these two gigs dependencies so having only production ready build um, that's that on the first glance it was kind of like uh, not the best practice to do it that way so I started to play with Larna I started to um, so making uh, for instance after they making install production after they making uh, build right after Larna bootstrap uh, I was trying to execute the Larna for each directory with pruning the dependencies to have only production might didn't work so that we still had those dependencies um, and the problem is that this, this stage of building generates a whole bunch of dependencies and for, for the stage of, uh, of kind of like running stage uh, we're using that data directory the same it's pretty much has whole bunch of of dependencies and so what what we what we should do instead like suggest 
this guy, we need to not just copy the directory from the previous state to another, but instead in this stage we're making the npm package publishing to the locally hosted registry and then in, in that stage we're gonna uh, install this package from this locally hosted registry thus eliminating like 80% of those dependencies actually all the dev dependencies and having the tiny image of 300 megabytes so he suggested that solution but it's really incomplete example I wasn't able to understand like what's going on here how he how he is hosting registry I also um, like bring him a question but I just, I just was thinking about how we can do it and I figured out the idea so basically we have multi-stage um, docker run so and each um, each run command especially in different stages right will spin up container a docker container from uh, and then after it docking crane is stopped. So it means that we can just run the local registry somewhere like uh, by the way he's suggesting the where d where .co. I don't know well, I know this is the, the lightweight private proxy registry. It's a pretty nice tool um, and uh, so we can just spin up this registry here then push our package there and then pull there um, so the first idea came into my mind so I need to spin up the image somewhere locally then I do in this docker run I push in my local instance of the image then in this stage I pull but I don't like this idea because I want uh, this docker build to be atomic so we don't need to spin up everything else to build the image we just run docker build and it builds uh, and there is the other idea that came up into my mind and that I want to make the proof of console the idea today uh, basically um, this image this um, NPM registry open source NPM registry allows us to specify the directory of the storage of this registry right so what we can do we can um, spin up in the one one command we can spin up the registry by specifying particular storage directory of this registry then we can in the same run statement we can uh, publish our NNN package to this registry right and after run command finish the, the, the registry server will shut down so but on the next stage what do we do? We will just copy the storage, um, the storage directory of the of the registry, spin up that registry again, and then download the package from the registry, install it, and after we install it, we can delete the storage directory. Right? It's, it it might be a bit complex to understand from the first point of view, but you will make more sense on it when we start experimenting. Uh, right, so I decided to do it that way. So right now we're gonna be doing that. But before moving forward, as a learner build requires a lot of resources and time, it takes like up to 30 minutes to to have learner build. Uh, I've decided. So I first go ahead and create my own npm package. I'll do proof of concept. Create my own Docker file where I um, create some dummy npm package. I'll I'll do the the same thing I just explained. Spin up the uh, lightweight registry push the image then on the other stage I will pull it delete registry and see if it works right um, so I'll go ahead and get started by creating the docker file uh, let me let me check because I didn't recall how to properly publish uh, npm um, how properly publish npm package so I'll Google publish npm package. All right, so we just need to add some origin. Oh, never mind. Okay, cool. Uh, let's go ahead and 
um, do some really close example to what we have. Uh, what I'm gonna do, okay, close this up. In my terminal, I'm gonna create a new folder. Uh, and that folder, I'm gonna I'm going to create a package JSON file, so I open up in my Visual Studio Code. Uh, so I'll create, yeah, I'll create a package JSON file. And uh, to really have this test pure, I want to copy some of the um, file from the NAN because like this example it has a lot of DAO dependencies and a lot of uh, just regular dependencies so I want first of all make a build of my project with DAO dependencies include to just to compare the uh, to see the size of the image then I will make the build without the dependencies and see the size difference, right? And then we will do the proof of concept I'm suggesting. So we're gonna be make a build without dependencies, make an npm publish, then make a npm pull, and then see what will be the difference in the sizes of those three images. So I'll go ahead and get started. I'm just uh, simply copy the contents of this file here um, so here we go all right oh the uh, okay so they they have okay they have it here then I'll create some other file called index index fuck index GS and then I'm do some let's say I'll, I'll make some import of, of some dependency here so we have dependencies uh, just actions Yep, we have it there. Alright, so we have console log. This is our build. And just log this. Model exports. Dope. Okay, I guess they want one uh, recording. I just didn't recall the syntax of exporting in Node.js. Well, export a. Why is highlighting this? Expected semicolon. Oh, fuck, I forgot it. Let me Google it quickly. Um. Model export. So I I, I caught it right, but they they highlighting the error for some reason. Hmm. Ah, okay. Oh, I forgot to put the equal sign. That was stupid. Okay, dope. All right, so now we can create our Docker file. Um, and let's uh, let's do it the same way as we have here, so not over complicated. We have we do npm ins run. Sorry. 
run npm install okay and then entry point would be node index gs right so pretty much the same we have here okay so pretty much simple setup let's go ahead and build it uh, so I'll move my image somewhere here so it won't close the terminal all right so we can type doc do you have a docker spin up yeah docker build tag all right npm poc1 poc right proof of content and let's build it and see okay so it's fetching the image I have a chance to drink my water once npm doing everything okay, it fetched the image yeah it didn't even download the image yeah mm. now we have npm install so we should okay we have an error uh, I guess uh, we have some because I just blindly copied the um, just want to copy the package is on and okay I won't do it that way uh, let me delete this npm file and uh, do the npm init so we don't have any issues like that um, npm init package name registry test yep 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 yes Dope. And then, so we can basically add the only dependencies, only the dependencies and their dependencies objects from that file, right? So this is what be interesting. Okay, let's try to install it locally first to ensure that everything works smoothly. In the meanwhile, also add docker ignore, ignore file, docker ignore, ignore. So none of, uh, so our node modules won't be propagated inside of the docker build. So a docker build will build the fresh modules, right? Okay, so it, it went well. It went well, so I'll go ahead and remove it, but still have this document now for some reason. For some case, right? We have a package log so far. So now we can go ahead and run docu build again. Okay, we still have the same issue. Why is this happening? I don't know what does it mean even. I know what does it issue mean. I thought that this was the corrupted package is on file, but looks like creating dog image for no project. Ah, sorry, sorry. I forgot to do that one. It was stupid issue. I forgot to add one essential thing there. Okay, we need to copy. Our existing directory to the app and then put the work dir as an app. That was a stupid issue. Sorry. Let's give it another shot. Let's try one more time. It should go in a while. Yeah, that was stupid. <laughs> okay. Looks dope now. Let's hope that everything will want well. So we're doing this proof of concept uh, because it's quick. And we can quickly find all the issues with that. But then after we see that it works, we will apply the same for the NADN and try to build the less than 300 megabytes NADN uh, doc image. And if so, we will create a PR for the NADN and contribute to the open source.
Okay, looks looks fine. Looks like everything everything has been built. So let's see the side of the image. Docker image. So we have uh, 249 megabytes, which is pretty big for such a simple uh, one-line code. But we can run Docker run just to make sure that it works well. Okay, dope. The run has happened. So now let's uh, here apply the omit dev. If I'm not mistaken, let me quickly Google it. npm install production. But I guess, okay. Uh, In version 8x and above, use omit dev. We have 16, so we should use omit dev, I guess. Let's try it out. Let's run the second proof of concept. We also can. Okay. Fuck, what is that? Unable to find image. Ah, okay, I, I, I just, yeah, that was stupid again. I just typed run instead of build. It was just copy-paste typo. Okay, it's going well, and we will see now if we have any difference in size for those images. So we will be able to optimize, right? Okay, cool. Let's go. Um, let's see Docker images. Yeah, we have a big difference, more than 100 megabytes. So you see the the production only dependencies take 138 megabytes, and with that we have 249 megabytes. So we can prove now that um, our production only version. Uh, consumes much less dependencies uh, yes size so right now what we're gonna do we're gonna be doing this proof of concept with multi-stage docu build in order to install the image with with DAO dependency then I don't know how we should publish this with production only dependencies so we can pull it and have it with production only dependencies let's try it out um, so first of all let's google storage location okay we can do a configuration here all right even before before reading this I want to I want to test a new package To reduce chances of publishing, publishing scope by default, scope packages are published with private registry. To publish scope packages, public and publish access public. So let's go ahead and do it locally uh, before we. Before we do it in the Docker, let's do it in, in the machine. So I'll install this package registry to my machine. I'll execute the registry and I publish 
the image to it and then I'll try to pull it somewhere okay so now we can uh, execute let's see the get started docs okay we can simply spin up the service Oh, what's happening? I don't want this. Okay, now we spin up the service, so we have everything. And then we can publish the image. I'll go ahead and read how we can. npm publish set uh, registry address. How specific you to publish the command lines? npm config set registry. We can do it that way. Okay. Okay, this guy was suggesting to do it somehow. Okay, we can simply define the this like this. npm config registry equals Okay, open up another terminal window here. Equals. We we need to copy this over. Yep. And then run. Let's it's just here npm publish. Okay. I guess we need to add the same npm config user root as they suggested here because they want some kind of a user. Let's see. Okay, we have still the same issue. All right. Um, you to authorize this machine using npm at user, but I don't want to authorize. Uh, Authentication. Here you go. Okay. Right. All right. They want. They they tell that we can do it that way. And use a registry username test test uh, test at test dot test. So now let's let's go ahead and try to publish. Okay, we've published it. Oh no, let's make npm install first. And then we can publish it can publish over existing version the version ah gotcha we need to increase version because I made some changes yep let's do it that way okay we published it the thought that we have registry tests okay 300 bytes, let's convert it to megabytes. Bytes to megabytes. No megabytes. Bytes to megabytes. Yeah, it's, it's nothing pretty much. Okay. 
okay so now if we go ahead to any kind of other directory uh, we need the npm here blah 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 oh no no not here uh, but test to npm init yeah and then we're gonna do npm config registry npm install registry test try to install the image yeah it installs and what I'm curious is what will be the size of the image dope so we will install it we have node modules okay I want to see how we can uh, we can do H twenty seven megabytes, so it's not a lot. It's really tiny, twenty seven megabytes. Okay, it just shows the point same, but how could it be possible that the production build was 100 and something megabytes? Now, never mind. The proof of concept works, and this is what we wanted right okay now we can we should I'm thinking how we can structure it in docker so after we make the install of the of this tool we can use it I think um, so we can not just install as uh, by the way yeah by the way we can do it that way we can let's open this file as well so what we can do yes yes I trust uh, we can create another file here called index.js then we have packages so we have registry tests and we can const a equals require and then we have console log a dope now let's run it that was typo okay yeah we have we have everything so we have it we have it ready and we can do the same test on our docker right perfect so now after we do all of these we installed the image from the private locally hosted registry and use it and execute it and it worked uh, I'm going to just go to the docs for for this uh, registry and see how can we really specify the location of the storage Okay, they allow us to specify the config file, but I, what if I, what if I don't want config file, but instead I want the environment variables? Okay, so now we have everything. Okay. Lightweight. Um, storage location. 
configuration file. Okay, I, I saw this before. And they want us to okay the new public URL that's not that one HPS proxy notifications audit experiments no we want to authentication proxy setup development plugins, not that one let's go here again no that's not this so basically how can we command line tool oh okay I guess this is what we're looking for command line tool the locate home directory rely on X data home at the first choice and Windows environments will work. Okay. Uh, I got it. Default storage location. Here we have. We use X data home environment by variable default to locate the storage by default, which should be the same as home local share. If you're using custom storage, this location is irrelevant. Okay, full list of the line variables. Here we go. Storage path. So, if we specify these we can specify the storage path, right? So, for instance, if you're running, we can specify n equal so config file this one here we go yeah we have some data here so if we go ahead and uh, engineering registry test and PM let's publish again and see so we publish in it oops no such package available ah nope uh, that was invalid command it's again my so npm npm config I want to publish yep okay we still have all right we need to authenticate before npm add user test test uh, yep, we authenticated and did our config change? No, it didn't change anything. So I guess the database located somewhere else, but let's try to publish the image and see. So we've published it, but this okay, this file didn't change. Okay, yeah, we have it. Yeah, we have the tar here, and we have the packages on. Awesome. By the way, what is the size of this tar? Can we just do HS registry? Eight kilobytes. Are you kidding? I can't believe it. Four kilobytes the tar. Maybe because it doesn't con yeah, it doesn't contain the node modules dependencies. Uh, because 
it just yeah it contains the files with the dependencies but not the dependencies itself that's why for kilobytes correct so that's cool it means like we have everything ready to get started with our proof of concept all right um how we should then programmically npm at user npm at user uh, okay in CI let's google it so someone can help us understand how maybe we can specify the data without interactive prompt because in docker we won't be able to do it that way all right we should we should just all right I got it we need to create the file with with the npm username npm password npm email okay cool so what we can do As this guy mentioned about this npm or c file, you see him. He wanted to credentials publishing. Okay, they only have some, I guess, right? In in the in here they should have some. Let's let's see. No, they don't have npm rc local they don't have so what we're we gonna do we gonna extend the file npm rc with credentials so how can we do it is basically at the first stage we can create this file by our own here alright so after spending a couple of hours or so I managed to find a solution to it um, it was a bit tricky um, because uh, the NPM required me to to authenticate right and uh, I was I was trying to do it with npm login and pin at user but these commands required me a prompt or maybe there are some tricks uh, how you can supply the data in the prompt in the docker build but I didn't, didn't manage to find it and I uh, didn't want to do it that way because I don't think it's, it's a sustainable approach um, that will work on all the systems um, so I decided to dive deep into how the um, our uh, where the Casio registry handles the uh, 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 the npm at user command internally, I found that they have this npm uh, this API endpoints, and where you can simply supply the name and password, uh, like the JSON parameters, and as a result, you will get a JSON response with your token. Um, there is another way they suggesting to anonymously authenticate, but uh, if you go to the the docs, um, they tell that okay you can have an anonymous publish, but I wasn't able to achieve. So I I will set up the config the same way as they suggesting, and um, I've set up the token, but but it still required me to. <clears throat> to I guess make a login at least anonymous login and uh, that's why I didn't follow this approach because uh, I still need to use npm <coughs> login command and additionally I need to create the somewhere configuration file so it was just simpler for me to in our docker step to follow this uh, this command so I use the JQ CLI tool to extract the token uh, JSON value from the response to this uh, payload right uh, and then I'll create a file npm.npmrc with the following tricks. So I'm writing the echo 
uh, setting up the registry address, the ELF token, the result of this token, then the, the registry, then the new line here, identifier, the registry, and I put it into this file. And I run npm publish, and the package has been published successfully. And indeed, after I, I, do, I do it, I'll check the terminal, and the, the size of the, of the uh, image was uh, significantly lower. Uh, so I went ahead to the NAN uh, Docker image and modify it in appropriate way. So the same, pretty much the same way, I installed those dependencies, I've executed the server. There was one problem that uh, I needed the, the uh, where does your server to be executed on the background um, and uh, I, I was trying to use it with PM2 but even if you use it with, with PM2, uh, PM, it, it still needs some time to initialize and you need to install PM2 and manage it so it's additional overhead so I decided to do this really really uh, uh, I would say straight forward approach just by setting this person so we're executing this comma without blocking the terminal but then if you run the uh, learner publish you will get uh, especially if you run yeah you will get if, if you try to authenticate against this endpoint you will get the error because um, it, it takes a few seconds for or I see your server to initialize. So I put this sleep 10 seconds command here. It, it may be not sustainable because depending on how much resources your machine has, it might take even more than 10 seconds. So sometimes this docker build might fail, but I didn't find the more uh, sustainable approach here at the moment. Uh, maybe um, I need to spend some time discovering, maybe there is some um, NPM packages that help me to run the server and wait until it initializes, so until it be available on the local host, and then execute this command. I think there should be some um, some uh, CLI tools like these. Yeah, and then uh, so I'll I'll run all the same in our test package. So we make learner publish. So we published it to the registry, and then on the second stage of our docker file where we're pulling the image so I've um, I've just copied the registry directory this this kind of directory and uh, execute this npm install and the problem was that this image still had almost one and a half gigs uh, I was upset with that because I've done a lot of um, discovery, a lot of those stuff, and it's still one half gig. So I, I've decided that uh, I need to uh, see the layers of this image. And in order to see the layers of the image, you can go ahead and type docker history in the name of the image, and you will see each layer and how much it takes. So right now I have already optimized image, so uh, here we don't see the proper data, but the problem was that this layer where we're building the dependency here took almost one gigabyte. Uh, and even though in another layer we're making a removing of the registry, but it's still um, how the docker works, each of these run command creates a separate layer. And all these layers are included to docker image, even if you remove the um, the directory you created here after that. So I've optimized the image by uh, combining all of the run commands um, in our build stage, in our sorry, in our uh, uh, artifact stage to the one comma. I'll show you it right now how, how I did it. So here I have it saved, and here how it looks like. So here we have a lot of uh, run commands. I, I don't mind because we, we are not using this uh, builder as an artifact, so I, I'm not worrying about 
it to have the big size, but still it's, it's a bad practice to have it like this as a separate run. It's a bad practice for docker files, so it was implemented by some of the learner contrib uh, some of the any and contributors, and I don't like it. But in any case, I combine them to the one command, and it work well. Uh, the only reason, the only thing I've changed it, I increased this time out for 20 seconds because 10 seconds wasn't enough in that case for the server to initialize. But right now, I managed to decrease the size of the NNN build. Let me show you. To uh, 659 megabytes. So this is a lot. This is more than twice. We have 1 and 1.9 gigs, and now we have 659 megabytes. So this is a big optimization. It still, for some reason, doesn't have the size uh, the 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 original image has where they are not building any end but just installing from registry uh, it, it takes around 300 megabytes uh, so we we have twice as as larger image uh, so I'll try to investigate it but what I think is might be the reason I have some custom dependencies installed here maybe they took such a big amount of space but honestly I don't think so I'll try to investigate it a bit more because uh, if we if we see our our history we can actually pull right now uh, our NEN image and compare the histories of two images we see that our our run comma takes like 538 megabytes. For some reason, it takes a lot. Um, this comma, so it produces a lot of files into the storage. Um, and I don't know. Like here, they they don't have such amount of files. So let's compare the original image that we pull from Docker registry. Let's let's compare their history and this history and see maybe we can have some even more further optimization here. Because you see that at the end of every build they make they execute this command to clean up and not overload the layer of the docker with uh, some temporary data. So we are here how it looks like. Okay, now we pull the image and we can go ahead and type docker history of NAN and compare it. Right, so you can see that um okay the layer they have okay let's see the size docker images I'm sorry about that so okay ah okay you can see that that image now is big right okay it's it used to be smaller it used to be around uh 300 megabytes, but now it's now it's my image is pretty much the same as original. So we have the most efficient optimization with it. Um, it's bad that the Im the the any end repo grows so so large. It's more than half a gig. It's it's insane, but still um, I like that the fact that we optimized our image to the most uh, I would say efficient optimization and I'll go ahead and probably raise a pull request about these uh, to any end so they can have optimized image right so we, so we did a great job and now uh, we can deploy our any end to our kubernetes cluster and we won't get timeout errors I guess because it it's much quicker to download a 600 megabytes image than 2 gigs image. Uh, yeah, and uh, I'll I'll see you in the next video or live stream where we'll be 
uh, spinning up the NAI in, in Kubernetes infrastructure. So, thank for watching this. Uh, if you have any questions or any suggestions about what we just did or at all um, anything you would like to discover regarding software engineering, feel free to drop me a comment to this video, hit the like button. And yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing you in my next one. Bye bye.